Hello mga ma'am sir and welcome back to Lina Wonders. If it's your first time here, I'm Lina and this is the Booktube channel. Today we have a huge ass haul and the thing is, I'm not really the kind of booktuber that kind of gets off on binge buying books. It's just never really been my style. But that said, I feel like this year is definitely an exception. I feel like being caught up in the middle of this global pandemic and just being in enhanced community quarantine from March until June really exacerbated this like book buying tendency in me. I felt like suddenly my book buying abilities were threatened or you know put on hold and it's that kind of thing where the more you kind of are told not to do something, the more you kind of want to do something. And I turned 30 exactly four days ago and I realized that one of the perks of being an adult amidst the crippling amount of responsibility that you're suddenly under is that you have a choice to buy yourself stuff that you love as a reward for working hard, surviving, and trying not to let your mental health go to shit. Before moving on to the books, I also wanted to bring you guys' attention to a food drive that I've been supporting since March. So it's called the COVID-19 Food Drive PH, pretty straightforward. And basically, this was organized by the college that I used to work at, and it was a culinary college. So basically, people cook gourmet meals for a lot of the less fortunate communities here in the metro, specifically in Taguig, Pasig, and Mandaluyong. So I'll be leaving a link in the description bar below. And if you can give even just as little as 150 pesos, that would really help. So let's pay it forward, please. And without further ado, let's get on to the books. I will begin with philosophy and creative nonfiction. So <laughs> I got these from an online bookstore. Uh, I think it's called Murang Books, and they basically sell secondhand books and these were in really really good condition and I bought them all together for I think just 399 pesos which is a super duper duper steal. So here we have the first three volumes of The History of Sexuality by Michel Foucault. Um, Foucault is a philosopher that I've been very very interested in because his ideas kind of incorporate a lot of real world practice. And that's not to say that philosophers don't do that, in fact that is kind of the philosopher's main concern. But I find that with Foucault, it's a lot more relatable, it's a lot more, I don't want to say easy because the ideas that he posits are not exactly easy, but it's a lot more applicable to actual daily life. We have volume 1 which is an introduction and I've actually already read this so that will be on my December wrap up. And then we have volume 2 which is the use of pleasure and I'm going to be reading this next so I'm super super excited because I've also been very interested in that. Like exactly what is the use of pleasure? I prefer Professor back in college said something like, um, the female orgasm is actually very important because it's an indicator of compatibility and also in its uselessness, it does kind of have a use in the sense that the pleasure that is experienced by the female who will be the one sort of carrying the baby obviously heightens the chances of there being a repeat performance and stuff like that. So I'm hoping that I can learn more about ideas like that, although not necessarily in a sexual way, although knowing Foucault and since this is the history of sexuality, it'll probably have to do with sex. And last in this riveting trilogy is Care of the Self, and this is also something that I'm very very interested in. Um, over the span of this quarantine, this pandemic, and I'm sure that this is going to sort of continue on as we move forward, even in this new or next normal or whatever people are calling this fucked uppery now. Um, mental health has definitely been on my mind. I've been to therapy a couple of times because there's just been this sort of gnawing, all-encompassing grief slash anxiety slash flotation of childhood trauma sort of seeking to destroy my life and everything that I've built. So I'm very interested in self-care, not just as something that's very surface level, like putting on a sheet mask or something, although that can definitely be self-care, but like self-care in a broader sense of the term. What does it mean to take care of yourself? So next is a memoir. This is Welcome Home by Lucia Berlin. And the thing is, I don't really know much about Lucia Berlin as a person. When we were in our fiction workshop class in my master's, we took her up as one of the authors for short fiction, but yeah. Other than her short fiction, which was great, I don't really know much about her. And I'm very interested in that because, I mean, look at her. She looks like such a sassy lady. The cool thing about this too is that there are photos. Not to be like a female version of Gaston, but 
I feel like with memoirs, sometimes it's just nice, you know? Like, it's just fascinating to see all of these old photos. Last but not the least, on like the Philo CNF side, we have Hunger Makes Me a Modern Girl by Carrie Brownstein. So Carrie Brownstein is someone that I've looked up to since like the year 2010. I'm not sure if you guys ever watched the show Portlandia, but it's really, really funny. It's sort of this parody show on hipster culture and how... Basically, millennials were obsessed with bringing the 90s back because that is the era that we grew up in and then we very quickly sort of transitioned into the digital era so we're always sort of obsessed with the nostalgia of that time. Do you remember the 90s? Yeah. You know, people were talking about getting piercings and getting tribal tattoos. Yeah. And people were singing about saving the planet and forming bands. Yeah. There's a place where that idea still exists as a reality. Dream of the nineties is the life for them. All the hot girls wear glasses. Yeah. So Portland Year was a really, really good show, and from there I kind of discovered Carrie Brownstein and I started listening to her band Slater Kitty, which is super cool, super indie vibes, and basically this book is about her life and her craft and what it means to be a modern girl existing in the world. This is something that will be fun to read because it's still strange for me to kind of think of like the 2000s as something that happened over 10 years ago or over 20 years ago. I'm not sure if it's the same for you guys but it's just something that still blows my mind and so yes, I'm very excited to have my mind blown by the Carrie Brownstein. So just to get it out of the way, I bought one graphic novel and that is Black Hole by Charles Burns. So the thing is, there was a phase where I was really, really, really into graphic novels. Like I was very into Amariko Tamaki stuff, very into Adrian Tumina stuff. Super duper obsessed with Essex County by Jeff Lemire. But I don't know, it's just that graphic novels are so expensive, you know? And whenever I'm in a bookstore, I'm like, am I gonna buy like three normal books or one graphic novel? And I always go for three normal books because those are three different experiences. I feel like I've been sitting here filming this haul like forever. Because of course before sitting down to film this actual video, I filmed all of the cutaways. So I'm just like... <sighs> so next, we have Orange World by Karen Russell. So Karen Russell is one of my favorite authors, although admittedly it's been a while since I've read anything from her. Uh, I think the last book that I read from her was Vampires in the Lemon Grove. And that was just a really, really solid short story collection. I'm very interested in reading this from her also because I have not read a short story collection in the freaking longest time. I really feel like that's something that I just let slip or kind of got out of the habit of doing. Whereas I used to pretty much read only short story collections or they used to be kind of my first pick. So I'm very excited to kind of get back on that ball. And speaking of short story collections, my next book is one by Lucia Berlin who I mentioned earlier. And this is Evening in Paradise. This is short stories as well. Very excited to read this. I was actually looking for her other book which was manual for cleaning ladies i think or cleaning women and that's like her most famous one but then someone outbid me in the ig war of like my 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 hopefully next time i can get my hands on that too up next are two novels by my favorite emily st john mandel so we have the lola quartet and last night in montreal so emily st john mandel wrote station 11 which has been getting a lot of hype or like rehype this year because it is about the end of the world as we know it via slow moving pandemic which is definitely something that hits very close to home right now and lots of scholars have also been super duper like interested in it as something that leads to posthumanist thought if you guys want to know a little bit more about that um, i have a conversation video with my friend erica who is a phd taking up creative writing and fiction and all of that good stuff. So I'll leave a link to that video in the description bar as well. So up next is an oldie but a goodie and this is Get In Trouble by Kelly Link. So this is actually a book that I already read before but I read it on my Kindle and I always feel like it's good to have a physical copy. <laughs> I feel like some people would, you know, beg to differ, but really this is one of my favorite short story collections from Kelly Link. I feel like there's such a good variety of stories in this. Her other collection that I own is Magic for Beginners. And the thing about Magic for Beginners is I feel like it's that classic like debut short story collection where every story is kind of this banger and the title story is just 
incredible, freaking amazing. And in this volume, I feel like the stories are a little bit more quiet, but they're also very unique and very fascinating. Um, the first story from this that I ever read is called I Can See Right Through You. <sighs> and you can actually read that for free because it was published by McSweeney's on their website. So I'll leave a link to it below. I won't say anything except that I freaking love the way that Kelly Link writes and I'm very interested in rereading this sometime next year. By next year, I mean three days. So up next is a birthday gift to me by my dear dear friend Ostir. I recently super got into Otessa Moshfeg's work. Um, I read My Year of Rest and Relaxation and I will get into it in like better detail during my January wrap-up but just I freaking love, love, love that book. Like it was so freaking good and I'm so interested in reading more from her body of work because I just I cannot explain like the kind of roller coaster ride that, that took me on and she's just so funny. Like she's funny but she's haunting and then there's this like carefully placed tenderness that just kind of breaks you inside as a reader. So yes. Very, very excited to read this and the rest of her books actually eventually. And last but not the least for fiction is another gift. So this is Gun Love by Jennifer Clement. Earlier I mentioned Book Ends Beginnings and I actually kind of made friends with the person running that. I don't know them personally but it's just that I asked for like some books to be pre-ordered which aren't available here like on Fully Booked and stuff. They were kind enough to send this along for free because the last time that I bought books from them it was right before my birthday. So thank you so much Book Ends Beginnings and I look forward to reading this even if I have no idea what it's about and I've never really read anything from Jennifer Clement before. And of course I've saved poetry for last because I love poetry, it's my favorite genre and the one that I am looking to specialize in. Let's go MFA! Last few terms, I'm so freaking excited. Okay, so first off we have One Day I Will Save Myself by Elvira Sastre, poems in Spanish and English. So the thing about poetry collections like this, like I have sort of skimmed this, is it's not really something that I would buy for myself right off the bat, but my friend VJ, who is a lecturer at De La Salle University, was actually also bidding on books the same time that I was, and he bid on a couple of books that he decided not to get, because like in bidding wars, you're just like, mine, 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 and you just kind of sort out the ones that you win over next time. So he asked me if I would take some of his books, and I did. So I'm excited to read this anyway, even if it's not really a book that I chose, just because I'm interested in the Spanish language and how it translates to English, and particularly how that works in the medium of poetry. Up next is Brown by Kevin Young. Kevin Young is a poet that I'm very interested in because he was given recognition by Barack Obama, and also he's someone who writes a lot about like the contemporary American landscape. He talks about the experience of being black in America. And I feel like his work does discuss a lot of things that sort of toe the border between what's personal and what's political. And that's always something that I'm very, very interested in. He's also a writer for The New Yorker. And earlier this year, I kind of went on this like New Yorker binge where I was just like reading articles from The New Yorker every day because it's something interesting to do and it's like interesting to see what people have to say about about certain phenomena in the world which sounds super vague but you know i feel like discourse is really something that i've been hungry for this year um and it's also something that's very difficult to have like given our local landscape so yes up next are two books by ned parfan recently i was a fellow in the usd or university of santo tomas national writers workshop and for those of you guys who may not be familiar with like the whole workshop system basically there are certain workshops that are national workshops meaning that you get critiqued by really established award-winning authors and they only select a couple of writers from all over the philippines and just to give you an idea of scale as of 2015 i think or 2014 there were 7,107 islands in the Philippines. I know that they're like less now because of global warming and stuff like that, but basically that's the scale of that workshop. So the workshop was super enlightening, super great because I was able to meet so many people and so many great writers from all over the Philippines. I feel like when you attend your MFA somewhere like the LSU, mostly everything you read or like the people you're exposed to are very Manila-centric. One of our panelists, was Sir Ned and of all of the panelists I feel like Sir Ned 
was the most keen when it came to reading poetry and I don't mean that as an insult to the other panelists, I just mean it as a compliment to Sir Ned. I feel like he was super thorough with the way that he read everything and something I really admire in a panelist is when they can critique a poem given the poem's specific context. You know, you will come across some people who just critique a poem based on a uniform set of rules. But that's not the way that poetry works. Like, every poem has its own world, every poem has its own standards that you can sort of judge, critique, enjoy it by. And just talking to Sternet, I was like, oh my god, I need to read this person's poetry. Because from the way that he critiques, like, I can tell that his poetry will be something that I enjoyed. During the critique of one of my poems as well, he mentioned one of my favorite poems, which is Subterranean by Eric Gamalinda. And so of course, I took that like as a huge compliment, even if it was as a critique. Um, but also, I was like, ah, okay, I will order all of Sir Ned's books. So yes, these are so flippin' good. Like, I will give you guys my full thoughts in my December wrap-up, but get them. They're available on Lazada and Shopee. University of the Philippines Press. I also bought a couple of Carl Phillips books. Carl Phillips is an author who was introduced to me by my friend Ostir and I really really enjoy his work. I feel like he has a really good command of language when it comes to setting like these super moody tones and just like in a Carl Phillips poem, everything is lovely. Everything is a bird or everything is blue. Everything is a petal. Like I just enjoy that kind of poetry and that kind of scenery. So first we have The Tether by Carl Phillips and then we have Riding Westward by Carl Phillips. Last book that I read by Carl Phillips was Reconnaissance and I actually bought that as a gift for Austere but then I ended up borrowing it so thank you Austere for being a sport. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm very interested in reading these two because I do kind of like reading different collections by different authors and sort of plotting that in their timeline, like with their body of work and just seeing how they've grown over time, the different fascinations that they've developed over time. And yeah, so very interested in reading these. Last but not the least, we have New and Selected Poems by Stephen Dunn. So Stephen Dunn is a poet that came to my attention during the quarantine because Hosier, as in the singer Hosier of Take Me to Church fame, used to do these Instagram live sessions of him like reading poetry and talking about what he was reading. Basically, Hosier as a booktuber, except on Instagram, as a bookstagrammer rather and he read a couple of poems from Stephen Dunn and I was just like wow like my mind is freaking blown and I started researching like other poems by Stephen Dunn and I was like this is so flippin good and I want to read everything so this particular volume covers two decades of Stephen Dunn's work so this is work from 1974 to 1994 and I'm very very excited to read this. So that is it you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know if you've read any of these books and how you found them. Let me know as well the different books that you're picking up. Like what did you receive for Christmas? Are there any books that you're super duper excited to read as we move the fuck away from 2020? Hit me up in the comments below and don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much again and I will see you guys next time. Bye!